Good morning. It's great to be with you today. It's Monday, April 10th. It is the day after Easter Sunday. It's a big day for, for me and for me, you, probably many of you, everyone in the Christian tradition yesterday was a really big day. And I hope it was a blessing for you, for your family, for all that you were with. And I hope it has left uh, a transformative space in your soul. I hope you were able to engage in God on a very deep level and to come away with something new that you've learned about, about how much you are loved and valued by the God that transcends all that we know. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Christian Churches in Iliopolis in Niantic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries, an outreach effort to reach those who may be spiritual but not religious, or those who have a deep and abiding faith but haven't yet found that faith community in which to engage. I'm also the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast, and it's a pretty cool podcast. If you haven't checked it out yet, there are some fantastic guests and fantastic and inspiring stories there that you may want to check out. Last week, we talked about self-awareness, and self-awareness is an incredible gift. When we are self-aware, we become, uh, well, more aware of who we are. When we are a, a more aware of ourselves and how we feel, how we react, how we move through this world, our instincts, our habits, our go-tos when we are in conflict or anxious, the more we know about those things, the better we are at being intentional about how we want to move and behave in this world. Self-awareness is so important. Today, I want to jump into tips and strategies to grow that self-awareness. All right, you want to become more self-aware. How do you go about doing that? There are a lot of different things you can do. I'm going to mention 10 here. And don't try to, uh, to engage in all of these. Pick out a couple, two or two, maybe three, that really speak to you, that are doable, that you can integrate into your daily habits. Again, we make lasting changes when we change something we do daily. So if you can make something a daily habit, that's where you're going to experience real and tremendous results. So pick out a couple, maybe start with one that you can incorporate into your daily routine and you will experience some change, some good change and transformation, some real awareness. And once you have this awareness, we'll talk about what to do with it. So why do we do this? We want to grow as a person and we want to grow in faith. The more self-aware we are, the deeper our faith can grow. I've been uh, engaging with this idea with friends and colleagues for a while now about uh, you know, Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, what I've been tossing around with friends and colleagues, and we've really been diving into the, this concept, are we able to love our neighbors more than we love ourselves? And we keep coming back to no. The degree to which we are in relationship with people is really hinges upon this aspect of how well we know ourselves, self-awareness, and how, how well we care for ourselves and love ourselves. And as we work on that, we can work also on the depth of our relationship with others. So it's really crucial work, not only in our spiritual, personal, professional lives, but most definitely in our spiritual lives as well. So here are some strategies, and again, what, rain, what rings with you? What rings bell? Um, pick one, pick two, maybe three that you can work into your daily lives. So the first one is going to be practicing mindfulness. Uh, set up an alarm. Set up something each day to take a moment and be truly present to what's happening in that moment. Uh, what is, is there some grounding techniques you can do? What's something you see? What's something you hear? What's something you can feel? You know, those things. But be mindful in the moment. Take a few breaths. What are you experiencing in that exact moment? And the more you do this throughout the day, the more it's going to just become an instinct and a habit. So practice mindfulness, and it'll become more and more a part of your experience each day. 
keep a journal. I can't overstate this one. Now, journaling is a broad, broad thing. We can journal for a lot of different reasons. We can journal for exercise. We can journal for calorie intake. We can journal for gratitude. We can have a very specific reason that we journal. We can journal for spiritual growth as we read through scriptures, or we can just take 10 minutes a day, and this is what I recommend for self-awareness. Take 10 minutes, journal about your feelings and your actions. What did you do during the day? Where did you have a reaction? What did you notice about yourself? Keep a self-awareness journal. Number three, get feedback. Ask others, talk to family, talk to friends, talk to people who know you best in this world and ask their feedback. Again, seek out trusted people, people that know you and who you trust, who um, these may not be the closest people in your life because we get blind spots with each other, but find people who will give you honest feedback on your reactions, attitudes, activities in different situations in life. Uh, then, oh, you can always take personality tests. A Myers-Briggs is a popular one. There are no shortage of those out there. What I recommend most highly is the Enneagram. Do not take a test to determine your Enneagram. That is the absolute worst way, and you're not going to get very good results with that. Depending on the day that I take a test for Enneagram, I've come up with about four of the different numbers on the Enneagram. The best way to interact with the Enneagram is to get a book, specifically Richard Rohr's book. He had a co-author with this. It was written a while back. It looks like this. And it's available on Amazon. It's by Richard Rohr and Andreas, Andreas Ebert. It's fantastic. It will explain your life up to this point. It will explain more about you than you're really comfortable with. But it's a really great book. The Enneagram, friends, is a shortcut. If you want the shortcut to self-awareness, read that book. Engage with the Enneagram through Richard Rohr's book. It will shortcut this entire process. Uh, reflect on your values. This is a big one. What are your core values? Do you know? Have you ever taken time to hone in on those? Uh, hop over to the blog. There's a link there where you can download a, a PDF that will help you identify and outline your core values. But know what those are. And there's a lot of really good values to hold. And we all have some that are central to us. We don't hold all the good values, but there are some that are again, central to who we are. So know what those are. Practice self-compassion. What do you say to yourself? Are the thoughts that you say to yourself something you would say to a friend? And if they're not, why are you speaking them to yourself? The thoughts in your head, the thoughts that you say to yourself, the words that you say to yourself. If you wouldn't say them to someone you love, don't say them to yourself. You need to love yourself. Remember earlier when we talked about the degree to which we are able to know and love ourselves is determinative to the degree on which we can love and know our neighbors. So it's important that you speak well and think highly of yourself, not inflate your ego, but again, grow in self-awareness and speak with love and compassion. Seek out new experiences. And this is a fun one. You learn a lot about yourself when you try something new. If you have not been out of your comfort zone lately, I invite you to do that and encourage you to do that. Try something different. If you're a regular runner and you have a path, try a different path. Do you usually run on hills? Try a flat space or vice versa. If you usually run on a flat space, find some hills. Even in central Illinois, we can find a few inclines here and there. Uh, but. Try something new. Try something different. You'll learn something about yourself in that. Learn from your mistakes. Monday morning quarterbacking or armchair quarterbacking, however, whatever that reference is, it's instructive. It helps us understand things better. When you have an interaction during your day that is um, intense, 
sit down with it later and think about it. Go over it. If you have conversations that you wanted to do differently, sit with them later and talk about it in, to yourself. Write about it. Journal about it. But go back and not to dwell on it and to just don't buy a house there, in other words, but analyze it like a post game type situation. What did you say? What did the other person say? What did you do? How did you react? What did you feel? Uh, pick apart that and you'll learn something about yourself and you can learn about what you would like to do different and you can make plans to intentionally react differently in the future. Engage in therapy and coaching. Always good practices that will help you. Um, if you want to, there are a lot of good therapists out there. There are a lot of great online options. I know right now it's really hard to get in to see one soon. These are really full. The pandemic did a number on us, for sure. And all the isolation, all the time alone. So counselors are hard to see quickly these days, but they're out there and there are a lot of really good ones. Uh, read the reviews, talk to some friends, get a recommendation for good ones in your area or online, or engage a coach. And again, go to the blog. There are some uh, links there that may be helpful with that and learn more about that. Uh, post or practice self-reflection. And again, this is very similar to journaling. This is diff this very similar to learning from our mistakes. It's kind of like putting all of those together, but take time at the end of each day or schedule a time throughout your day to just reflect on how things are going, kind of checking in with yourself. Be the friend that calls yourself and say, all right, how's it going? What's been intense today? How are you doing? How are you handling it? What conversations have you had? What reactions have you had? How would you handle those things differently if you had a do-over? Or what do you want to celebrate about how you handled these situations? But take time to reflect. And again, we're doing these things so that we can have a better life. We want a better relationship with ourselves. We want a better relationship with others. We definitely want a more relationship with the divine. So pick one of these things, pick two of these things, incorporate it into your daily routines. Again, we change things in our lives when we change something that we do daily. So if you have any questions, reach out. If you're wanting more information on something, reach out. Comment below and let me know which one of these you're going to try and let me know how it works for you. I hope that this is helpful. I hope your journey is a good one. And as always, I'm here as a partner to you on the journey, however that can be as an encourager. As a friend, as a pastor, as a coach, let me know. I'd love to be your biggest cheerleader and fan. I hope you have a great week. Bye for now.